The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the settings. The Lord breaks the settings of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a cow and Syria like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strikes for its bear. And his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits the throne over the flood. The Lord sits the throne as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. We thank God for Psalm 29. You may be seated. We bring you greetings from Mount Calvary Church of Deliverance. Amen. We're Bishop Willie Douglas Dillard. It's the founder and pastor. We greet you in the holy name of Jesus this afternoon. Amen. We thank God for our Apostle Lamont Robinson. Praise God for our Elder Gilmore. Praise God for our Brother Nas. And the other saints. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. At this time, if you have a song or a praise report, we are going to briefly open this part of the service for that. If you have a song, you may sing it at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Everywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. He never failed me yet. Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Thank you. 
shall bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast of him. The humble shall hear and be glad. Somebody said, oh, magnify, magnify the Lord with me. Yes. And let us exalt his name together. We know God is about unity. God is about oneness. Amen. That's why he summons us to constantly have one mind. So that way we can be together in understanding him and his interpretation of his gospel. Amen. We greet all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The name which is above every name. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. There's only one God. There's only one faith. And then there's only one baptism. I have people try to divide it up in many other ways. But according to the word of God, there's only one. Amen. And God keeps his word when it comes to that oneness. Amen. Even Jesus said, I and my father are one. Amen. Amen. In the absence of Bishop Willie Dillard, we honor him on today, being the pastor of this great Mount Calvary Missionary Deliverance Church. I don't know if I got it mixed up, but he knows and he understands. Amen, amen. And to Mother Pandora Burns, we're so happy to see you as always in prayer for support. My sister Natasha, amen. So good to see you, my friend. Amen. And for my brother in the rear, we thank and praise God for you as to you. Amen. Somebody asked you for $10, now you hand them $100. Amen. Thank God for the mind and the knowledge. Most of all, we thank God for life, health, and strength and breath. Hallelujah. A lot of people don't realize that the very breath in your nostril, according to the scriptures, is the spirit of the living God. And we must respect that as long as we live. And the way we respect that, we come into his house to worship him. Amen. Everybody else wants to go to the beach and Tony Allen and all that kind of thing. And that, that's fine. And that has its place. And that has its order. But it's also good for us to come together and dwell in unity. God deserves the praise. God deserves the honor. And God deserves the glory. Amen. We're going to move very speedily right now. Very speedily. We're going to take up the offering. Amen. I love taking up the offering. I love giving to God's house. You know why? Not only because you can't beat God giving, but God just supplies our needs even when we don't know it. All right? Even when we don't know it. God supplies our every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And what I want to do uh, also is I got an envelope here and this envelope uh, Apostle Burns is for the fifth Sunday coming up. This is my offering. Amen. For the fifth Sunday. And if I can give it to you later on or whatever and whatnot, I would appreciate that. Because uh, my good friend and brother, Apostle uh, Bishop Albert, Albert uh, Phillips, is being installed as a pastor in his church. And he's the chief apostle of the Anointed by God Ministries and uh, where I am a chaplain and uh, they're going to be installing him as the pastor of that church around 3.30 on the fifth Sunday and I would love to be there. However, this is my offering that I'm going to leave. You can give it to Apostle Burns for the fifth Sunday. All right. It does not negate responsibilities. Amen. Because all of us have to play a part in order for God's house 
to remain open. Is that right? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So once again, we greet you in the master's name of Jesus Christ, in which we live, move, and have our being. Hallelujah. I want you to know today that I yet say that I'm saved. Hallelujah. Why? Because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, him crucified, died, buried, rose on the third day, and went into hell and came back and spoke to the apostles and lived 40 days on the earth and then ascended into heaven. All right. And then he left his promise and said, Lo, I go to prepare a place for you. That if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That there where I am, there ye may be also. We're so thank and praise God for his promises toward us. Amen. Amen. We're going to move right into the word of the Lord. Amen. And by way of a short announcement, it's probably going to be a surprise to him. But I told him, I said, when the Spirit of the Lord leads me, I'm going to tell him. On first Sunday of next month, first Sunday afternoon, we're all going to join back here as Apostle Lamont Robinson is going to break the bread of life and give the word of God. Amen. You see him, you know, doing things with the audio and getting things right for us and making sure that we're on the air and things like that. But, you know, every now and then, every now and then, you know, I used to run track, my brother, you know, and sometimes when you stop running track or you don't get an opportunity to run track, guess what happens? Your legs start to slimmer, okay? Your legs start to, you know, give a little, get a little stiff and things of that nature. Or even being a piano player, okay, or a flutist or whatnot, whatever you're into. They even say that if you even literally stop and refuse to walk, that your body will forget how to walk and you have to learn how to walk all over again. Amen. Amen. So every now and then, you have to flex your muscle. Okay? And we need to hear what thus saith the Lord coming from Apostle Lamont Robinson. So on the first Sunday of next month, we're going to join here Amen. And we're going to sit and we're going to enjoy a message coming from Apostle Lamont Robinson. I'm going to take a seat. I'll probably play the keyboard or something like that or whatever. Things like that. Maybe I'll get a chance to introduce him or whatever. Things of that nature. And just hold on to your seats and buckle your seat. You know, just, just hold on to your seat because he's going to come. I believe. I don't know. But I believe he has a word from the Lord, you know, every now and then you have to sometime uh, get into your main assignment yes. that God ordained you yes. actually to be. Yes. Amen. There's many people in this life have missed their assignments because they're not into their main assignment of what they was born to be. Some were called to be pastors. Some, that's why the Bible says some, I feel the Holy Ghost. Some apostles, some, not everybody, okay, some bishops, some pastors, some evangelists, some missionaries, some musicians, some soloists, some deacons, some deacons. You know why? Because everybody cannot function as the head at the same time. Do you know what happens when you have more than one head? You got yourself a freak. Of nature, all right, and we don't need no freaks of nature up in here. There's only one head, and that head is God. Hallelujah! And we abide by whatever the Lord say do. So on the first Sunday, Facebook, Facebook, don't go nowhere. First Sunday, Apostle Lamont Robinson is going to be at the podium, and whatever the Lord tell him to say, he's going to say. Whatever the Lord leads him to do. He's going to do, and we're going to be in support of this dear apostle that is among us. Amen. He's a special, uh, uh, like they say in London, he's a special laddie. Okay. He's a special young man. Amen. You don't see too many men. 
I'm talking because I'm talking in the spirit. I ain't talking about him. I'm talking in the spirit. You don't see too many young men doing as Jesus do on a Sunday afternoon. Going out to get them and bringing them in. Amen. Before I stepped through that door, he introduced me to a young man that I'd never seen before and invited him in church. Now, people may criticize and whatnot, but you see, uh, how should I put it? Light and darkness does not mix. Okay? When you're speaking to somebody that's yet in darkness, they can't see the light of Christ. See, the Bible says, let your light so shine. You see, this holy light that we worship has a glow to it. You know, and you have to understand that when the glow of the Lord is upon you and whatnot, it simply shines on other people. And sometimes they don't understand what they see because sometimes the shine might turn around and blind them. You ever looked at the sun for a quick second and whatnot and the shine just blinded you and whatnot? That's somehow, that's sometimes with the light of Christ when you're talking to the sinner. You know, and when they see and they don't understand, you know, what's going on. I've been in this neighborhood for years. And I, I know these people all about that, things like that. The question is, do you know Jesus? Do you know the light of the world? You may know everybody in this neighborhood and whatnot, but you don't, but you don't, but you can't calm the waters. You can't calm the sea. You can't speak to the, to, to the waters. You know, you can't say peace be still. Okay, the God we serve, according to Psalms 1 and 4, rides the wind. Okay, smacks his hands and whatnot and creates the world and whatnot. Whispers, matter of fact, in Nahum 1 and 3, it literally says the very clouds that you see is the dust of his feet. All right, so the very air in your nostrils is the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. What now? He spoke to the north wind. And what that so that we can experience the coldness of the enemies to spoke to the south wind so we can take the heat of hell. Spoke to the east wind so we can take the earthquakes and the things like that that go on in our lives. And spoke to the west wind so we can take the tropics of what we can't understand or what the enemy may try to do. And he took that and he breathed into man. Hallelujah. Then man became, hallelujah, a living soul. And what not. So when a soul man is out there that has the light of Christ, what we ought to do is pray for him or her. Amen. I was listening on yesterday. I watched a little bit on Facebook and what not. How the speaker was out there. And I said, Lord, send your word. Lord, send your word. Lord, send your word. Send your power. Hallelujah. Bishop Gaylord spoke, said a story one time. Now, Bishop Gaylord's church. Is the, is the former O.M. Kelly uh, Church, amen. Well, the Church of God in Christ. And that, I believe, is on 131st Street and 5th Avenue. He took the church out in the street, okay, next to, across the street from the park. And he had everybody just make a noise. He just said, the Holy Spirit said, just make a loud noise. The whole, they, they turned around and they just started shabbating the Lord. And started speaking in tongues, all that kind of thing. A man from 34th Street Apostle heard the noise coming from 131st Street and followed the noise and found the, where the noise was coming from, got into the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can't tell me that the voice of God, she just spoke about it. Hallelujah. We're in confirmation. Well, the, how the voice of God is upon the dead. All right? That means upon the desert. Well, now you can be out in the Sahara Desert and you will hear a voice out of nowhere. And it's the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You don't hear me. You don't hear me on the day. And well, now Facebook, let us keep the voice of the Lord. Constantly penetrating into the hearts and the minds of men. Don't be ashamed to call his name. Okay? Everybody else call every other every other name out there. All right? And what not? They call Satan's name. And what not? They love Satan. All right? Those that have that gay pride parade and what not? 
They said they loved Satan. And then Satan turned around and tricked them and then turned around on that on that Tuesday, then came out the monkey pox. And the only way you can get a monkey pox is through having sex with another man and what not. God got something to say. Hallelujah. When you're not speaking his voice, God got something to say when you're listening to another voice. Hallelujah. God requirement is for holiness. This is what this young man is trying to do. Is trying to tell people that holiness become a dying house. God made you a new creature and a new creation. And you ought to walk into it. And what that? Did not Jesus, did not the Son of God, where would, would you find him? You only found him maybe two or maybe three times the more. I'm following the spirit of living God. If I put this down for another day, I'll put it down for another day. But you only found Jesus Christ in the synagogue maybe two or three times the most. Wow. Hallelujah. The other times, where was he? He was sitting down with the publicans. Okay? He was talking with the Sanhedrin court right. at the age of 12 and 13. Yes. All right? They looking for Jesus. Jesus, where are you? Yep. I'm standing talking to a prostitute, letting her know that she'll have to live in darkness. Wow. I'm standing there talking to the hobo and the half-naked man like we saw a little while ago and letting them know that Jesus loved you. Oh. That you don't have to give in to the world and give in to the way that the world wants you to live. But you can take up the cross of Jesus. Hallelujah to God. And follow him. How do you follow him? By reading his word. How do you follow him? By taking his word at his word and understanding that his word is true. That's why the Bible says that let every man, sorry, let God be true. And every man a liar. All right. So when man start talking, the first thing I do is I go in the scripture and I say, well, God called you a liar. I didn't call you a liar, but God called you a liar. Why? Because the words that you are speaking is not the words of God. So if it's not the word of God, the, the Bible tells you to not even receive it. And if they don't receive you, mm. the Bible turns around and says, shake the dust off your feet. Yes. It's not even worth taking dead dust. And, right now, and do you want to know something about dust? That most of the air that you breathe is filled with dead skin. Did you know that? And, right now, and that's what forms dust and things like that. Okay, God proving himself. Turn around going to the book of Genesis if you don't believe me. God did not take dirt and create you. No, he did not. He uses dirt for cultivation and things of that nature. Dirt doesn't have no soul. But out of dust, and you want to know where dust comes from? Let me get a little deep on you. Okay? The rays of the sun, okay, has particles that come off it that travels 92 million miles. You have a trip. Okay? 92 million miles and gets on top of dirt. Hallelujah, God in his wisdom that took that, that traveled from the sun and landed on the earth that has DNA in it yes. and INA in it. And what not. God took that and scooped it together and what not, made hands and arms and legs and eyes and this and that, what not, and breathed the breath of life into that dust. And guess what? When you leave this earth, guess where you're going? Right back to where you came from. Right back to not dirt. You're going back to dirt, the dust. That's why they say ashes to ashes and dust to dust. Amen. Because that's what we are. We're nothing but the top of the dirt. <laughs> Amen. We're going to move right along and get into the word. That was the appetizer. Amen. That was the appetizer. But make sure all of you, uh, can and will, let us be here, probably 2 or 2.15 for uh, the service and whatnot. We'll, we'll serve the Holy Communion. That's, that's not a problem and whatnot. But the word is going to be coming from the dear apostle. And if he don't have a word, he's just going to have to just quote the scripture and sit down. Amen. Because it's going to be in his hands. <laughs> Amen. Out of the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, the book of Matthew, we're going to move as speedily as the Lord allows us. The book of Matthew, the fifth chapter and the 14th verse. The fifth chapter 
and the 14th verse. It says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Jumping to the 16th verse, it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We want to also tap into Psalms, the first chapter, and the third verse. Psalms, the first chapter, and the third verse, which reads, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruits in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Jumping around once again to the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the 8th verse. And you'll understand what I'm about to say in a little while. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to talk from an unusual talk, but you want to understand me? Amen. Hold on to your uh hold on to your seats like you're on a roller coaster, getting ready to go down. Okay, or getting ready to move to the side and whatnot very swiftly. We want to talk about the invisible man. <laughs> the invisible man. Okay. Alright. There's a scripture that says, Ye are the salt of the earth. Mankind lying in ignorance and weaknesses, whereas a vast heat ready to purify, but Christ sent forth his disciples by their lives and doctrine to season in with knowledge and grace. If they are not such as they should be, they are as salt that has lost its savior. You gotta follow me for a little while. If a man can take of a profession of yes, a, a profession of Christ, and yet remain graceless. No other doctrine, no other means can be him profit can make him profitable. Our light must shine by doing such good works as men may see. What is between God and our souls must be kept to ourselves, but that which is of our itself, open to the sight of men. We must study to make suitable to our profession and praiseworthy, we must aim at the glory of God. Jesus being the Son of God did not or have not quivered or altered his standards rules and regulations and heavenly bylaws from our heavenly father. However, he came to fulfill the law. Can you say amen? He first gave the Ten Commandments, then Moses then gave his standards and guidelines to function within them. The Apostle Paul out of Tarsus, out of the city of Cilicia, who was taught by Gamaliel, who was known to be a great teacher or the word or, or, or the word of God gave him or observance of the Hebrews being a group of people that have studied education themselves on the word of God fulfill the law of the gospel of Christ. Earlier in the scriptures informing them to love you one another that marriage is honorable to, to not harbor hate, malice, but to let your light so shine before men. Amen. Paul, sitting under this teacher, had learned these things. However, the observe, the observe on how stubborn these people became and looking into their own knowledge, education, and coming up with their own wisdom on how they should live even in division as racist, prejudiced, and to discriminate because one would not maybe 
believed God like they did, so he came to fulfill the law of the master by letting them know that he, Jesus, is the Savior yesterday, today, oh, yeah. and forever, oh, yeah. that he does not change. Here, Jesus, who is a spirit of the triune God, meaning God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Redeemer, and God the Holy Spirit, the paraclete that is in the world today, says that I change not. His deity, his power, and his glory, his name, his ways of doing things, is in his sovereignty, does not change. The God we serve, though sweet and lowly, humble and holy, yet says in the book of Deuteronomy, one, that I, God, I kill him, and I make him alive. I bruise and I heal. There is one place in the Bible where he says that I'm terrible. But Psalms 47 and 2, the God we serve heals, hallelujah, delivers, protects, and serves, and satisfies seemingly, cannot be seen to do the flesh of men, meaning he cannot be seen through the mouth of men. Okay, man speaks not God's words, but expresses a carnality and lascivious living. He cannot be seen, unfortunately, through the eyes of men. Doesn't wish to see with the vision of God, but he's busy being a lover of himself and not a lover of God. Okay? Again, I'm talking about the invisible man. Okay? His arms cannot be seen. Okay, why? Because they doesn't extend like the arms toward the betterment of men but towards selfishness and violence and the destruction of even himself. Reaching out to get on a high, okay? And another and other things that encourage silly behaviors with men and women for their amusement and entertainment. They can't see God because of the feet of man. What do you mean, Brother Gilmore? That is not so swift to humble themselves to run to the altar before the mighty hand of God. They refuse to place themselves in the direction to go to the church, but to swift to run to mischief and places though that, that one would act mischievously, which is not God. Facebook, lastly, they want to remain spiritual, yet carnal. In other words, they want to straddle the fence in, in indecisive at the time that in the, at the time the God ought to be that God ought to be magnified. For example, doing a living as the world does, as the old saints say, cutting the food, amen, on Monday through Saturday, okay, but uh, having a Jesus pin on Sunday, hallelujah, Toting the Bible, all right? Riding the subways and buses, cars, planes, trains, and even walking the dog in their persona. The world cannot see God in you, around you, or through you, and even sometimes behind you because he is concealed under the lock, and the lock of shame and the key of carnality. We decide to be in the world and of the world, which we shouldn't be, to come out from among them and be separate and touching not the un the unclean thing. We wish to be disobedient to the Ten Commandments, so therefore God the Father, God the Redeemer, and God the Paraclete, shamefully to say, has now become the invisible man. Can you say yes, Lord? Yes, Lord. The one you deny like Peter did after he was arrested. He becomes the invisible man because he's like King Uzziah. Okay, some of us standing in the way between God and man. In the year King Uzziah died, the Bible says, I saw the Lord. Okay, and, and his train filled all the temple. The Savior of the world is unnoticed. Why? 
because he cannot be found through the darkness of people who rather live insane and to straddle the fence to dictate whether to keep their garments clean and holy or to dip and dab in the foolishness that the devil has designed for you so you can possibly kill yourself. It is my belief, my brothers and sisters, that the reason why there is so much confusion, disparity, and disappointment, uh, vengefulness, hate, pride, and no peace are because he's not welcome to be our God at all times. When we get around some of our friends that are in the world, we then hide him, hallelujah, praise God, to appease them and pacify them by not having a biblical even discussion and in making them comfortable in affairs outside the church, like barbecues and banquets, graduations and competitions. Hallelujah. We sometimes go along to get along in having a little of uh, something along with them, acting out of character in the name of being a part of the crowd. Hallelujah. Instead of representing Jesus Christ. So therefore we hide our cross. We take off our Jesus pen and leave the Bible in the glove compartment. Because God hath became unessential like King Uzziah did. God becomes the visible, the invisible man because he, because the light he gives from his act of redemption is not received for what it is, but is now a spark. Many of us want to remain in our standards that are against God and his ways of living through our traditions and give that priority of, of, of them over his commandments. The Lord gives a perfect example on how God's ability to be to be God in all becomes dormant and weak looking and not betraying him in the full strength of his power. In Mark, the seventh chapter, the 13th verse, he talks about that. He says, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, okay, which which ye have delivered nor served up in front of the master instead of him. And many such like things do ye, your traditions, meaning your assumptions and opinions, when it comes to God, it does not line up with him. I told you to buckle your seats. Basically because it's laced with the con convincing of the dictations of the flesh. God said that he will not dwell in an unclean temple, which simply means he's not present. Why? Because he already stood at the door and knocked, and you did not let him in. So therefore, the door of opportunity for the sinner is now closed. Why? Because you're keeping God out of sight, the invisible man. So, if he's not there, then we ask the question, Pandora, Dr. Pandora Burns, who is pulling the strings that causes men and women to error with him? The answer is Satan, the devil, that one that comes to steal your virtue, kill your spirit, and destroy your soul, all because he hates God. I'm almost through. Wake up now. However, the word of the Lord explains to us to let your light so shine, yes. which is God, so shine before men that so that others may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. But the problem yet remains that many believers step between God and man like Uzziah did. Look back like Edom, which was Lot's wife, 
and desire to try to live as a hypocrite and speaking of uh, both sides of their mouth. Don't you know that the sinner man has street intuition inside them that that is like a lie detector that can tell if you're not telling the truth or even living the truth. Hallelujah. Some of them, when they catch you in places that you should not be, will pick you out and say, aren't you supposed to be at church? Hallelujah. There's no evidence of his power because you're always having the beat down from your doubts. Hallelujah of him being in your life. For example, you're always afraid. You're always fearful. You have no backbone, hiding and creeping, fronting and faking, and etc. When the God of the universe have all power in his hands to do the impossible and beyond, then we would ask or think, the woman may concern, we're wasting precious time, not allowing the fire of God to spread through us in the persons of the Holy Ghost to have reign in our lives, to save this world and even ourselves. We need to transfer our carnal desires out of the way. Hallelujah. Out of the way of the Lord and make him visible by lifting oh, him up. What do you mean? Yes. By allowing him to demonstrate who he really is, oh, though his through his power of love and his peace. Did he not say in Hebrews 13 and 8 that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, yes. meaning something to reflect from, and today, Something to see in the present and forever. In other words, as long as he is God, which will always be once we will allow him to be seen in our lives, then Satan's sinful tactics, hallelujah, will be defeated and then the world would be and could be a better place to live in well, hallelujah, for he came that you might have life and you might have more abundantly and not death. In other words, an extra benefit of what your eyes haven't seen, nor your ears have heard, neither have it entered into the minds of men of the things visible and invisible that God has prepared for you and I. My brothers and sisters, only Jesus Christ is the answer. He said in his word, let us lift him up and not our traditions for all the world to see. So he can draw all men black and white, Jew and Gentile, Protestant or Catholic, back under his wing as it was in the beginning. So he can no longer be invisible, but the visible written Savior. He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. So in my conclusion, so let your light, hallelujah, so shine before men, so that others may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. If our God is great, yes. hallelujah, hallelujah, in which he is, yes. then let us expose him yes. to this world hallelujah. of darkness and speak hallelujah. out against those that want to keep him hidden, hallelujah. concealed, and disrespected. As the invisible man. Glory to God. Amen. What we're saying, Facebook, and what we're saying to one and all, is that 
we have to come aside ourselves and let God arise in our lives. So the enemy could be scattered. You know, it's very simple. The world problem today is that they don't see God. They don't see God in the lives of church, many churchgoers. You wear a beautiful suit. You carry a cross. You wear a timid and a mitre well. and a Jesus pen and told a Bible. You know, and you're running down the street clean faced. It. But now on your car, you got Jesus saved. But they come up to you and speak to you. And you say, what for? Mm -hmm. Hello, why are you speaking to me? Well, the God we serve said with loving and kindness, uh -huh. Lord, have I yeah. drawn thee? Oh, yes. You was not drawn except somebody showed you love. All right. All right? It's kind of difficult showing the love of Christ and if you're biting like an alligator or a crocodile, wow. okay, and you look like some sort of piranha, but uh, that all you want is my flesh. Wow. All right? Women out there, somebody's talking to you. And what now? A lot of times the men, all they want is your flesh. But if you show the example that you are living for God, okay, then the invisible man, which is God, that was hidden by God's eye, did. The invisible man now becomes visible. Oh, glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of those people out there would come to Christ only if they can see Christ in you. Yeah. I sometimes ride the trains and the buses, things of that nature. Sometimes I'm in the mall, you know, in the, in the crowds and all that kind of thing. And I look around and I wonder sometimes because people act so mean. People act so ornery and rotten. The words that come out of their mouths, especially to their children. Yeah. Yeah. And what like that? I can understand chastising a child. Uh -huh. I can understand the child is out of line. And you told them, you know, Junior, stand by me, and they went all the way over there, and you snatched them back and all that. But we understand that. Yeah. And what like that? That's raising a child, which the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. However, I don't believe God allowed profanity to come through our mouths. Yeah. And we are saying. We are a part of him. Oh. How can you be a part of him? I spoke this morning about the, about the light shining yes. through us. Oh, yeah. How can you love God yes. that you've not seen uh -huh. and not love your brother or sister whom you see every day? That brother that was at the door before I came in, one of the first things I told him because I am so happy to know you. I am so happy to meet you. Yes. Thank you, Apostle Robinson, for introducing me yes. to him. And I even told him, I said, if you come on uh, Sunday that I'm here, your, your next fish sandwich or dinner is on me. <laughs> what am I doing? I am taking God from being invisible yes. and now making him visible. Okay. I'm coming out of William. I'm coming out of him. Yes. All right? Now, William needs money just like you need money. Okay? William needs to hold on to his and all that. William's hungry just like you and all that kind of thing, things like that. But Jesus came to me. Ah, and what, uh, when I was hungry, yes. he gave me food. When I was thirsty, he gave me drink. When I was lonely, hallelujah, he right. kept me company. All right. Okay? The reason why a lot of these people commit suicide is because they don't allow Jesus to be company for them. They let the other fellow talk. Okay? They let the flesh talk. Oh, why don't you just give it up? You know they're not going to like you. You know they're not going to uh, uh, always respect you. Look what you did in the past. They, oh, the devil is good at that. He always wants you to remember what you did yesterday. Look at what you did. Look at what you stole. Look at that lie you told. And what? Now, 
and got so and so hurt or killed or things of that nature. I always want to keep you in the negative. But if you lift Jesus, and how do you lift him, brothers and sisters? You lift him through acknowledging him. What did he say? In all thy ways. Now your ways are before him. The Lord just revealed this to me. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Hallelujah. And he will direct you back. Because you know what? He already took your way that you tried to get to. I often tell people, and this is not no money gimmick and things like that. I said, you really want to be blessed with the Lord? Give to God's house before you give to your house. Give to God. That's why we took up the offering. Okay? Because when I get to my house, and when I get my next phone call, and when I, I want to be blessed and sanctioned of God. But what I have to do is I have to keep him visible. Okay? Sometimes I'm in my tent doors. This is just a helpful clue for those of you even in Facebook and whatnot. And sometimes when the church is not open and the church is not available, when you can't quite contact apostle or bishop and things of that nature and all that kind of thing, I get to myself. I turn off the TV. Sometimes I pull down the shades of the blinders and I just say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. I don't say come by here because he's already here. All right. But what I do say, Father, I invite your presence. Make yourself known. That's why we got to be careful of the prayers we pray, even in church. Come by here. Oh, come by here. No, 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 brothers and sisters. What you really need is for God to manifest himself. Because guess what? He was here before you got here. He's here while you're here. And guess what? He'll be here the next time you get here. Beat you, beat you to the door and beat you home. Why? Because he is omnipresent. Omni. He's always right. He's just as much present here as he is in Israel. As he is in Australia. As he is in the White House. He is present. God is everywhere. What did he say? If you make your bed in hell, he's there. If you climb to the highest mountain, I think Mount Everest is the highest mountain, you climb to the highest mountain. He's there. There's no getting away from God. So how dare you say, come by? You don't know what you're talking about, brothers and sisters. You got to get a better understanding. What you mean is you invite the presence of the Lord. When I have served 7 o'clock in the morning, but after the song of praise, we invite. We have called the prayer of invitation. Okay? Not invite like, oh, okay, God, where's your ticket? Where's your ticket? Okay, now you can come in like the movies. No. Oh, what not? No, Father, we, we know that you're already here. Make yourself known. We want you to heal. We want you to protect. We want you to deliver. Watch over our children. Watch over our homes. Watch over our income. Watch over our finances. I heard a man say on a preacher say on yesterday, and what not? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty or the protection of the Almighty. Don't you know that your money is protected? Don't you know your health also is protected? Don't you know your family is protected? Why? Because you are a chosen people, a chosen generation, a city that cannot be hid. Ye are the light. Hallelujah. Ye are the light. Hallelujah. So if you have light within you, then all the effects of that light, the Holy Spirit, yes. ought to be regenerating in you. Don't let your light go out, brothers and sisters, okay? And be filled with the darkness of this world, listening to this world. I don't care what virus comes out. I don't care what pox, chicken pox, monkey pox, okay, pigeon pox. I don't care what pox comes out. I don't care what disease is spreading. He that dwelleth in the secret place, okay, the secret place, okay, the place where nobody knows, but God knows. And guess what? Hallelujah! He puts you there under the shadow of the all 
mighty. There are mighty things out there, but he is all mighty. Nothing can get through from get, get through to him. Nothing can get around him. One, one songwriter said he's so high, yeah. you can't get over him. He's so low, you can't get under him. He's so wide, you can't get around him. You must come in at the door. So brothers and sisters, let the invisible man, yes. the invisible man no longer be invisible in the lives of you all first. Because the only way God is going to be uh, exemplified in our lives, he said two things, two simple things. And it's, a, it's a broken sentence, okay, because it has a comma in between it. He said, am I, comma, if I, okay? And I, only me, only me. Nobody else says, nobody else my brother, nobody else apostle, and I. I hear the Holy Spirit take down your titles. Take down your accolades. Take down your uh, right reverend, wrong reverend, left reverend, right reverend, and what not. And I, if I. Okay? That means there'll be some that will do that, there'll be some that will not do it. And I, if I, will be lifted up. Lifted up. Only him lifted up. When I walk in the church, if he's not being lifted up, I walk right out. Amen. Because he's not there. Okay? Man lifting themselves up. Now there's nothing wrong with holy garb and things like that. It's appropriate and it has its place and all that kind of business. But if you're going to show me your holy garb and this and that, you want me to kiss your ring and all that kind of business and whatnot, I'm going to ask you, where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? He's invisible. I see you. Okay? Some of them got the nerve to walk down the aisle in their churches and they sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. No, not you. Not you. Not flesh and blood. Or like my mother would say, wind and bridges. No. Only God is holy and good and kind and merciful. It's these kind of acts, my brothers, that makes God invisible. We cannot see him. Thank God for the man servant. Thank God for the woman servant. Thank God for whoever God uses, the musician, the usher, you know, the butcher, the baker, the baker, the candlestick baker. Thank God for all of them. But we must see God through you or else he's still invisible. And that is a terrible crime that is on the earth today. He wants to be visible. He wants to be manifest. He wants to be made known, make, make, uh, make, uh, make known the deeds uh, to, to the people of God and like that. He wants to show people through you that you are healed and like that. Oh, they said you had COVID and whatnot, but you said that you healed. You walked around. Your doctor's report said everything came out negative and whatnot. Everything is fine with you. This is God being visible through your faith in him. Or else it's impossible to please him. Brothers and sisters, let us take this at heart. Don't take it as offense. I didn't try to offend nobody on the day. But God spoke to me and told me that he's invisible. And he cannot be seen because of the pride of men. Let us put down our pride. As Second Chronicles seven fourteen instructs us, all right, you need to come humble and pray and seek His face and turn from your wicked ways. Only then will I hear from I heaven hear and I will heal. I'll, I'll forgive their sins, all right, and I will heal the land. The land is us. Let us keep that in mind. As Apostle Robinson comes, amen, uh, in his own way, he wishes to pray, I promise to make announcements, and then upon that, we'll have dismissal. Let us say amen, as Apostle Robinson comes, and don't forget about being careful of the invisible man. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
and in our prayer of your presence, Father, we thank you. It's time to go higher. It's time. It's time to go higher. My prayer lost my prayer of my spirit. The Lord of flesh of your sovereign to be able to prophesy. You will be speaking. Let me know. Let me know. Speak fresh. Fresh of our to fresh of our to fresh. Fresh of our to another relation in presence.
miracles, signs, wonders, miracles, healing, deliverance, be amongst, be amongst our families and ministries. And we give you glory, we give you glory for so many. We give you glory for sins that you have saved. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless for his presence, to receive joy, to the only lives God our Savior, the glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore. I want you to shake your neighbor's hand and say, I thank you for seeing you in the house of the Lord. And I receive my miracle. Go in peace. Remember, God has some great things in store for each one of you. Leave the sanctuary of God, praising Him, glorifying God, and lifting up the name of Jesus. There's a miracle coming your way. Somebody says, There's a miracle coming your way. There's a miracle coming your way. Go in peace. Bless your boss.